إن الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه وعليه نتوكل ونتوب إليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهدد ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله هو حبيبه وخليله وهو ختم الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين فصلوة الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله الطيبين وعلى أصحابه المتطهرين وعلى من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما أما بعد يقول عز وجل في كتابه المبين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وبعد We begin by praising Allah We praise Him, we thank Him We seek His help, aid and assistance in all affairs We seek His protection from the evil results of our actions and from the whispering and the influence of the devils for whomever Allah Ta'ala has exclusively guided, they cannot be led astray. And for whomever Allah Ta'ala has exclusively misguided, they will find no guidance. And so we bear witness and give testimony that there is none to worship except for him who is alone and without partner. There is none that is similar to him. And none can suffice for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullahi anna hu Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We bear witness indeed that Muhammad the son of Abdullah is indeed the messenger of Allah. He is the seal of them and he is the beloved of Allah and the trustworthy prophet that he has chosen for himself. Know that Allah ta'ala and his angels are always sending prayers and blessings upon the prophet. O you who believe do so likewise. As for what follows, Allah Ta'ala has given the command and the sincere advice in His clear book, O you who believe, have fear and reverence of Allah, and that is the right that He has to demand of you, and most assuredly do not die except as Muslims. As for what follows, inshallah, today I would like to talk about something that we don't hear a lot from the manabir, from the pulpit in these days. And of course, our minds are preoccupied with what is going on with our brothers and sisters in Palestine and Gaza and Yemen and Lebanon and Lebanon and in Sudan we don't mention Sudan enough the situation in Sudan is horrific and the world itself seems to always be on the precipice of one catastrophe or another perhaps whether that's man-made or not is subject for debate wallahu mudabbir al-amr but Allah Ta'ala is of course the conductor of the affairs and Allah Ta'ala is in charge in every day. And so what I thought today I wanted to bring to our attention because the, the khutbah is just like a kind of a maw'idha and a tadhakkur wa tadabbur. It's an opportunity for us to be reminded of something. And I wanted to talk about the fada'il and the ahmiya dhikru yawm al-qiyamah. I wanted to talk about the merits and the benefit and the importance of remembering the day of judgment. Now this might seem something that would be straightforward because we ask Allah Ta'ala who is maliki yawm al-deen. We ask Allah Ta'ala for His what ihdina sirat al mustaqim. We ask Allah for His guidance. He is the one who is the owner, He is the king of the day of judgment. And so it might seem that it's a straightforward thing. But like with anything, there is a, a fa'ida, there is a benefit in us being reminded, inshaAllah. So I thought I would share just a few verses and some reflections 
on the 81st chapter, Surah at takwir And I thought I would discuss this because one, this is one of the, this is one of those suwar where Allah Ta'ala will make a qasam, He will swear an oath by a thing, but then He will also talk about a succession of things that we can feel nash'ar anhu fil mustaqbal, like it's going to be something in the future. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ In every one of these, في سِغَطِ الْمَبْنِ لِلْمَجْهُولِ Every one of these, إِذَا, when it happens, and then فُعِلَ 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 It's going to be in the passive voice. The meaning here is that this will give the feeling that this is something that will happen in the future. وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ فَقَتْ But Allah Ta'ala is the only one that knows when all of these will be completed. They are also to give us some sifat yawm al-qiyamah aw qabla yawm al-qiyamah. Right, the ashrat wa sifat yawm al-qiyamah. It's going to give us a few details and descriptions of what leads up to it. So Allah Ta'ala talks about the sun. The first thing that he mentions, إِذَا shamsu kuwirat. مثل كورة العمامة as Ibn Juzayr رحمه الله تعالى says Allah تعالى mentions the sun that it will be wrapped up it will be wrapped up in the way that you would describe a turban being wrapped up because when you wrap the turban around the head it will conceal right the head so the sun will be it will be concealed, it will disappear, it will go away in some fashion. Why is this important? Because human beings throughout history have placed so much importance on the sun. You will even hear scientists, they will say, life on earth is dependent upon the sun. We would disagree and say, life on earth and anywhere else is dependent on al-hay, wal-muhyi. That life is dependent upon the one that gives life. And so, in some ways, this is a tasghir, it's like a belittling of the sun, because we place so much importance on the sun. And it's true, it's one of the great creations of Allah. We wake up every day. In fact, our salah, the five times that we pray, are in one way or another in relation to the position of the sun of either when it's time to pray or even when it's prohibited to pray. So a shams he is shat nadim. It's a major affair. But we know that it's going to go away. Wa idin nujumun kadarat. Likewise, the stars will fade away. One of the commentators of the Quran he said that the other meaning that we can take from this about these stars being uh, that they will go away. He, he said, because also mankind throughout the ages, instead of worshiping Allah Ta'ala alone as the creator of the sun, they have worshiped the sun itself as if the sun is a deity to be worshiped. And so those people that worship the sun, or those people that use the stars, not for scientific things, as Allah Ta'ala talks about in other parts of the Qur'an to understand like when to plant crops or generally how time passes. No, but they say, well, this star is here and this planet is over there. And so when they're like this, then you have to do these things or you can't do these things. It's like a kind of astrology or horoscope. And sadly, we see many Muslims, I find far too many people when, when I see them online in their Instagram stories talking about the Pisces is this and the Virgo is that. And this is all shirk and kufr. I don't know how we're getting back to this, but this is quite astounding. And so one of the ulama, he said that Allah Ta'ala mentions these because also they're going to fade away and they'll be taken and they will be flung into the fire so that the people that used to use them for this purpose, 
they will see them in the hellfire and they will see the reality of what they are. They're just creations of Allah. And so it's also a belittling of these things that we think are so important or that will be able to give us the meaning of life or give us when it's the right time to do this or only marry a person whose star sign is this or that or this other kinds of nonsense. And so it's also a belittling of these things and a reminder that it is only Allah Ta'ala that we worship. Only Allah do we seek help and aid and assistance and do we worship. But also these things themselves that are there every day of our life, one day those things will go away. So it's also a reminder, we talked about the fada, and what are some of the benefits of thinking about the Day of Judgment? Now, sometimes some of us Muslims like to get spooky about the Day of Judgment and about, well, there's this hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu about this or that. And these are all important and they're all very true in their own way. But the grand importance of them is that we think about how can I live my life as just a, I'm just an abd and al ibad. I'm just a person, I'm just one of Allah's creation. I have to go back to Him. I will be held accountable for what I did. As Allah says later on in this chapter, that on that day, every soul will know what it brought with it, what it has. So if I want to think about how to improve my Islam, which is another way of thinking about how do I improve my being judged by Allah? This is, you know, sometimes we think in this very abstract way. I want to improve my relationship with, with Allah Ta'ala. I want to improve my Islam. What does that mean? The way to improve your relationship with Islam is to understand who are Rabb wa Ant al Abd. Right? Understand that He is the Lord and you are the slave. That He is the master and that you are the servant. And that you will be held accountable to Him on everything minute for the good and for not the good. So when we start to talk about the fada'il and the ahmiyat dhikr al-yawm al-qiyamah, the importance and the benefit of thinking about the Day of Judgment, we can actually use that to think about how I interact in my life, in my daily life. How do I interact with all of you? How do I interact with my parents? How do I interact with the Muslim and the non-Muslim? How do I interact when somebody, when they make me angry and I try to control my anger? How do I, how do, I do all of my affairs? Everything is going to come down to this one singular day. That's why Allah de describes it as Yom in Thaqil. It is an extremely heavy day. If you think about the Mizan, there is a real scale of which all of the A'mal of Jinni wal Ins, of all of the human beings that have ever lived and ever will live, and all of the jinn that ever lived and ever will live will be put upon that scale. Is this not something very heavy? And yet, The simple saying of La ilaha illallah is heavier than all of that. It's one of the heaviest things you can put on the scale. So think about the Day of Judgment as a way of helping you to correct your character. Somebody cuts you off. You, you know, don't, don't worry about being al-muntaqim, Allahu al-muntaqim, anta abdul muntaqim. Don't worry about getting revenge, Allah Ta'ala is the one that will take revenge. But rather, think about your deeds being put on a scale. And think about the right side of the scale, which in, at least for me, always seems to be not enough things on that right side of the scale. And there always seems to be far too many things on the left side of the scale. What can I do to either, as Allah Ta'ala says, you kafir anhum sayyatihim. What can I be the kind of person that will get some of those things either overlooked or brushed off the left side of my scale and something that I can put that will increase the weight on the right side of my scale? Because everything that I'm doing in my life, how I treat my family, how I treat my neighbor, all of these things, every single interaction, whether I think it is important or not, 
every interaction with every human being, everything that my eye gazes upon, it is all being recorded. And it's either going to go on the right side or on the left side. This is why Allah Ta'ala will talk in the Quran about Ashab al Yameen. Right? The people who will be the people on the right or the people on the left. The deeds on the right side of the scale and the deeds on the left side of the scale. And of course, we know we live, Nu'ish fi zaman aghafla. We live in this time of extreme heedlessness. We're distracted all the time. Your phone is going off, your watch is going off, the computer is making a noise. There's, we live in an age of distraction. And it's very easy to feel that it's just another day, as, a, as they have a saying here, another day, another dollar. But do we understand if we do have another day, and Allah Ta'ala, who are razaq, and He gives me a dollar, wa anfiqu mimma razaqanakum. Then give that dollar in some good way. Don't let that dollar, like even if you're a smart investor, if you even go talk to one of these, you know, non-Muslims like Warren Buffett or somebody, but they're atiq, right? They're smart when it comes to money. They're not going to just put their money and let it just sit somewhere. They want their money making money. So likewise, whatever siha, the health that Allah Ta'ala gives us, let us, let us let our health make good deeds. Whatever wealth that Allah Ta'ala gives us, whether it is a little bit or a lot, let us not just sit there, but let us find a way to make our wealth active to putting those good deeds on the right side of the scale and expiating the kafara, getting those ones off of the, the left side of the scale. If we have time using that same way uh, for that purpose. Because all of the things that we think are so important are all going to go away. Many of us were recently affected by the passing of our brother Jamal because he was like a, you know, like probably the rest of you. I didn't expect, I mean, I know in my head from a pure logical, one day he will die and one day I will die. But when he left in the way that he left and Allah took him very, just suddenly, in a moment, it caused me, even till this has been a couple weeks now, I still contemplate, I still look for him. When he's over, he would go after the salah and read the adhkar on the wall. I still look for him. And it's like all, all the things that you think is going to be the same day to day, another day, another dollar. No, this is not it. So use this time wisely. Inshallah, I will counsel myself unto you. Use this time wisely to put things on the right side or the left side. Because if you sit, if you just sit around, they will get allocated for you. And nine times out of 10, out of laziness and heedlessness, they will have a tendency to gravitate towards the left side and not towards the right side. So we want to be conscious about this. Likewise, Allah Ta'ala has also said, and this has been commented that because the sun is something that we think is, again, so necessary for life. Again, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said about the verse, or about the, the verse, إِذَا shamsu kuwirat that the sun will wind up and go away, thinking, well, if the sun goes away, well, what's going to happen to us? Well, this life is all going to come to an end. And he said, ذَهَبَ ضَوْءُهَا وَأَذْلَمَتْ That what? It's that its light will go away and it will become dark. وَقِيلَ الرُّمِيَ بِهَا and it will be flung away. And that it will even vanish. It's like, again, it's like, it, like in the same way that you would wrap up a turban. So here he's talking about the, the quwa and the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We think of the sun as this mighty, majestic object in the sky. And it is. But for Allah to make it go away one day, is nothing. So he said, like the wrapping of a turban. And that it will it'll kind of vanish and then it'll become very small. And he said, this is also important because the sun is not necessary. And this is one of the differences between a dunya wal akhirah. So in this life, Allah Ta'ala has sworn an oath by the sun, and he's made it a mighty sign of him, of his existence, and of him as Rabbul Alameen, 
He is, is, is the Lord of all of the worlds. But in Jannah, as Allah Ta'ala says, لا يرون فيها شمسا ولا زمزمزمزمهريرا. That Allah Ta'ala says, on on the day of judgment, once the once the Salihun, once they enter into paradise, they will enter into a place. There will be no sun, but it will be filled with light, and there will be neither shamsa wa zamharira. There will be no bitter cold. It's bard shadid zamharira. This is this is why it's important to talk about some of these obscure words in the Quran that we don't use every day. So even though in this life, we're, we're accustomed to the changing of seasons and, this, and the like, and we're accustomed to the sun being such an important aspect of our daily life that if we were to wake up and the sun wasn't there, we would freak out. But there will come a day, and after that day, inshallah, of the, of the righteous and the, and the believers that enter into paradise, they will go to a place, fidiya. وَلَكَنْ لَا يَرَوْنَا فِيهَا وَتْ شَمْسًا وَلَا زَمْهَرِيرًا They will go to a place where it is filled with light, but it will not be the light of the sun. So the other important thing is sometimes things we think are so quintessential, so necessary for life, that we have to almost rely upon it. مِثْلُ نَتَوَقْلَ عَلَاهِ نَتَوَهَ عَلَيْهَا We rely upon it almost as if in the same way that we rely upon Allah. No. The sun is there for an, appear, uh, uh, for an appointed time, and then it will go away. And so that he was just reminding of this, this beautiful fact. And then he said, what he said, And again, reminding us that, that there is a narration that the sun and the stars will be in the hellfire for those that used to worship them or draw meaning from them, that they will, be, they will be there for them and they will see them for what they are. And that they will reject them like the other asnam. They will reject the shirk, that the association that people, that they made with it. But to wrap up the first part, thinking about the day of judgment and learning about its signs, mashallah, this is wonderful. And there are a number of great books uh, written about the Ashrat uh, Sa'a, like the conditions of the hour. And these are, mashallah, wonderful. It is important to note that this is one topic in particular, Akhiru Zaman, and the approaching of the hour. That there are a number of ahadith da'ifa jaddan wal mawdu'at. There's a number of fabricated hadith, weak hadith. There's actually a very great book that if anybody is curious, I believe it's only in, in Arabic, but there's a great book by a scholar that actually went through and he classified all of the ahadith that relate to this topic, and he left out, he left everything out except that was sahih. It's a great book. So again, it's wonderful to learn, it's great to know the knowledge, but even more importantly, what is the impact of thinking about the Day of Judgment what should it have on our hearts? What should it have on our actions? What should it have on our ibadah? If we knew for certain, you know, we see these sci-fi movies, you know, Armageddon, oh, there's gonna be a comet that will hit the earth in uh, 72 hours. What would you do? Well, the kufar is okay, I gotta have one more Jack Daniels, and I gotta have one more puff, or I gotta go have one more man or one more woman, because these are people of dunya. So they're gonna just go do a little bit more dunya, and then it's over. But the Prophet ﷺ said, if the hour comes upon you, and in your hand is a young tree, what should you do? Plant it. Plant the tree, even if the hour is descending upon you. We all know the verse. We all know the chapter. When the sun goes away and the stars disappear and the, and, and the mountains will fly away like fluff and the oceans will boil over and on and on. That is the reality of the Qiyamah. And if you happen to be witnessing that, Imagine you seeing the sun go away. You see the, the mountains fly up into the sky. And there's a tree. 
that, uh, that the Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and Nabi al-Mustafa, he said what? Plant this tree in a world that will be destroyed. What does this teach us? What does this teach us from his uswa? It teaches us what? Have hope. And you do things because they are pleasing to Allah. It is pleasing to Allah that you would plant a tree for His sake. Out of His remembrance. Out of what? Ittiba'a sunnati rasulihi al-Mustafa. Out of following the sunnah because that is what His beloved Prophet Sallallahu said to do. So even though the world is going to end and my life is going to end and everything will come to end. Kullu man alayha fan. But I will plant this tree because I want to do that which is pleasing to Allah. Now, so far, it's Friday. We haven't seen the end of Friday yet, but it appears the sun is still there. And Mount Baldi is still there. All the things that Allah talked about, they're still there. So should I just go, well, I can kick back and put my feet up. The world is not ending today. Let me just go back to being mindless. Or should I go, Ya Allah, I know that one day all of this will end. And even if I don't live to it, I will die and I will have to go before you. I will only have what is on the right side and on the left side. And I'm really worried about how things are stacked up on the left side. So what can I do to demonstrate to you? Perhaps it will not be that you have sins like this. It could, not, it could be such an affair as one of the ulama said, that if it were purely a matter of ibadah, like pumping iron, you would not be able to get rid of those sins off the left side of your scale. If it was just merely like exercise, you know, it's like you get to a certain age, it's just you got to accept your body is what it is. You do the best you can, and you're in the best shape you can, but, you know, age is what it is. But there are certain things that we can say and do that will be so pleasing to Allah Ta'ala that it will cause all of those to go away. Right? Right? That they would. That those that believe and do good deeds and that they believe in Allah is one and they do the deeds for His reward alone, for His pleasure alone, though they may be difficult to do. And that they strive, يُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They strive in the way of Allah وَيُنْفِقُونَ مِمَّا رَزَقَهُمْ That they give out of what He gave. If He gave them a dinar, they give a dinar. If, they gave them a, if He gave them a dollar, they give a dollar. It is not what we, it's not, going to Jannah is not calculus. It is all about the affair of the heart. And it is about what is it that we believe in? What is it that we love? What is it that we fear? And what do we live for? So inshallah, if we can use whatever little time that we have left and think about that we will arrive with what we have, then let us ask Allah Ta'ala today to make us from amongst those that will arrive with a heavy scale. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us from amongst those that will come to the Day of Judgment with their mizan ala yamin thaqil jaddan that will arrive on the Day of Judgment with the right side of their scale, heavy inshallah. Qulu ameen. We ask Allah, of course, to pardon us and to forgive us. Rabbana iqfir lana dhrubana wa kafir anna sayyatina nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk innaka anta la ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa salwat Allah ta'ala ala rasulihi al-mustafa wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala wa ba'd. If we can move and fill in the gaps, it looks like there's quite a bit of people and we want to leave some space between the men and the women, so if you can move up and fill in the gaps. So to end with this, one person approached me recently, and they said that they had been doing some things they shouldn't been doing. They had been committing some sins. 
And they still had some khashya and khawf. They still had fear in their heart. But they, they were doubtful that Allah Ta'ala would forgive them. And so what, what had happened with this, not only did they continue to commit the sins, but they almost to the point where they were like, well, what's the point of repenting? You know, if I can't be perfect, if I cannot be perfect, then why should I bother repenting? And this, of course, is the makar, and this is the plan of shaitan to come to you and whisper to you, you know, the, uh, only, only the perfect people go to Jannah. So you, eh, just go live your life. You'll never be one of those. And I said, al-mushkila, the problem is not that Allah Ta'ala tires of us sinning because Allah does not tire. If you read Surah, or you read Ayah Al-Kursi, Allah Ta'ala does not tire. He does not tire of his sinning. And in fact, there's a beautiful narration from the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam in which he said that, and to paraphrase, that if there were such a people so perfect that they did not sin, Allah would remove them, yudhibahum, and He would replace them with the people that would sin, and He would forgive them. But this is the plotting of shaitan. So he's, I said, it's not that Allah Ta'ala tires of us sinning. Now, we should try not to sin. But the bigger problem is that we tire of repenting to Him for our sins. And this is, this is where, again, like investing, everybody loves to get rich quick. But the, it seems to me, as somebody who's actually kind of broke, but it seems to me that the people who are very successful at, at investing are people that have a long-term strategy. And they, are, they say one of the first things you have to learn as an investor is don't make decisions based upon your emotions. Oh, I'm excited about this. Bitcoin is doing this. Gold is doing that. This stock is here and there. And they're looking, always jumping for the quick fix. The problem with that, well, you know, you did, oh, that didn't work out. And then that didn't work out. And then that, and then what? You have so many defeats because you're thinking, until, you're thinking emotionally. Now you become tired of failure. Well, this is welcome to being a human being. You will fail. You will make mistakes, and you may even make a lot of them. But know that your Lord, Rabbul Arsh Karim, that Allah Ta'ala, the Lord of the throne, Rabbul Alameen, never tires, full stop, period. So the only, the only fatigue you ever need to be conscious of and worry about is you and me fatiguing from, from asking Him for forgiveness. And it's in the remembrance of the Day of Judgment and the benefit of thinking about the Day of Judgment and that I'm going to go to Him and I'm going to have to explain this life that I lived to Him and justify it before Him. That perhaps the only thing that I can do is ask for forgiveness. Of course, I will do the best to make my salah. And I will do my best to give money and charity, right? Those that amanu wa atu zakah, those that what? Those that believe and they pray and they give zakah. I will try, I will work on doing the major things. But do not think that it is your a'mal alone, that there's like, wow, Allah, look at the fajr that I prayed this morning. It's so amazing. You, have, you must enter me into Jannah. We have this idea. Or I missed fajr. I'm the worst human being in the world. I might, as well, I might as well not even try to pray it on time tomorrow. This is from the machinations of shaitan to whisper to you, to demoralize you, to fatigue you, to tire you out from asking Allah. And as, as Ibn Rajab and Ibn Qayyim, both of them said, what? That what we ask Allah for is less compared to that we ask Him, because this shows that we are in need of Him. In this, هذا هو المهم, this is the important part. So 
Take some time today to think about, read this beautiful chapter that is full of reminders, but also use it as a means to inspire yourself to be the best version of yourself and do not worry about shaitan. That, as Allah Ta'ala says, that only him and his, and his, his junood, his soldiers, or his army, that all they want you to do is to be what? Bin Asahab Sa'ir. They just want you to be along with them in the fire. And that the way out of the fire is through what? It's through what? Asullah al Afi. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Ask Allah for pardoning. Because Allah, He loves to pardon. Allah is al Afu, Yuhabu al Afu, Fa'afu Anna. As we say, right? That Allah Ta'ala is the forgiving and loves to forgive. Oh Allah, forgive us. And this is one of the last parts that Surah Al-Baqarah ends with as well. So if you have time today, also read the last page of Surah Al-Baqarah. And it talks about the importance of forgiveness. But do not tire of asking Allah for forgiveness. That would be a greater sin to the sin that you committed. And it will also be the most foolish thing that I or you could do because there is no way out of once we have committed the sin. Every son and daughter of Adam will make sins. There's no escaping that reality. The only way out of that reality is if Allah chooses to let us out. So ask Allah. Ask Him for emancipation for the fire. Ask Allah Ta'ala for hidayah, ask him for guidance, ask him for najah, ask him to be saved from the fire. As Allah Ta'ala says, أَهْلِكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ نَارًا Save yourselves and your families to the best of your ability. What? From the fire. Save yourselves. So inshallah today, take some time to contemplate these. We ask Allah Ta'ala, of course, نَصَلَّ اللَّهِ We ask Allah for pardoning. رَبَّنَا إِغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُرُوبَنَا وَكَفِرْ عَنَّ سَيَّاتِنَا نَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَنَتُبُّ إِلَيْكَ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ وَالصَّلَوَاتُكَ وَالسَّلَامُكَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّكَ الْكَرِيمُ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ